So now that we're already five days in March, I thought I would do my February wrap-up slash favorites. There definitely has been a lack of content on this channel lately. However, I have been filming every day for both of my channels. So that's very exciting. Got a lot of good projects coming up, some quality videos. Always a good time. If you guys don't know, my wrap-up slash favorite videos are the videos in which I wrap up all the books that I read during the month, and I also tell you about my favorites during the month, such as my favorite beverage and my favorite Netflix view and such. So let us get started. So Anna and the French Kiss, that was on sale on the Kindle for $2.99 in the beginning of the month. I thought Anna and the French Kiss, it's sort of a Valentine's Day love sort of thing, might as well read it. Everyone's been talking about that book, everyone absolutely loves that YA contemporary. Since it was $2.99, I figured why not, I read it and it was really, really adorable. It was another one of those books where you got to 90% and it still didn't have that happy ending that you were expecting. And of course you did expect the ending, but it gave you a little tension towards the end, which was was nice. It was just absolutely adorable and it had a lot of connections throughout which was fantastic. You got a lot from all of the characters. They were all developed so well. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars because it was a fantastic contemporary YA novel. For the rest of the books that I read, I actually made first impressions videos right after I finished them or a few days after I finished them. So you'll be able to see all my full reactions towards those books right now. Okay, so two cold fronts came to Long Island. <laughs> Blizzard. Not that huge, not like Canadian huge, but like Huge for Long Island Blizzard. Pretty much stayed in my bed all day. I figured, what could I be reading at this time? Looked across from my bed, decided definitively that I should be reading Blankets by Craig Thompson. This book is huge, however, it's a graphic novel, so it only took me a few hours. The only thing that I really knew about this book was that it was going to be a love story and Oh my god, was I wrong. Saying that it is a love story is such an understatement, and the ending is so bittersweet. Emphasis on the bitter. Oh my lord, it was so good. First of all, it follows Craig and Phil, who are brothers, and they share the same bed. Craig, being the older brother, gets really sick of this. He gets really annoyed at his brother, and the beginning chapter really gives you a small inside look at their terrible home life. That's all you really get throughout the book is just tidbits of their terrible home life. But you do see that Craig and Phil are very important characters that really do care about each other despite their brotherly disputes. And then it flashes forward into high school. Craig is made fun of a lot because he has gotten really into religion because his parents are really into religion. So he's gone to Bible school and he's gone to Bible camp and he's gone to like all these church events. Then he goes to Bible camp, it gets made fun of again. He doesn't really fit in anywhere and he meets this girl in Bible camp. Her name is Raina. They hang out together, they end up really liking each other, and then eventually Craig asks his mom to go to Raina's house for two weeks and follows a huge, wonderful story. You hear a lot about Raina's home life, which was wonderful because she was the love interest, and I love hearing a lot about the love interest. If I don't hear a lot about the love interest, it's totally not an okay story because I like hearing about all the characters. In the beginning of each chapter, you still get flashbacks of when Craig was little. Craig Thompson does the flashbacks so phenomenally. Usually flashbacks could be really hard to follow, and at this point, he does it so incredibly well. Seriously better than any flashbacks that I've ever seen. He does flashbacks the absolute best in this graphic novel. It's all about him growing up, but it has a close and ending, which is really hard to do in a sort of coming of age novel. This graphic novel was poetic, wonderful, absolutely phenomenal. I would recommend it to anybody. Blankets by Craig Thompson. So good. Five out of five stars. I just finished the last lecture about five minutes ago, and it was absolutely wonderful. This is basically just a book filled with healthy reminders and advice from someone who is going through terminal cancer. He is sad since he's written this book, and it is quite sad, but the book didn't feel sad. There was never a point in the book where you wanted to cry because it was just full of optimism. All it was was just small chapters of healthy reminders and little things that you should be thinking about at all times. Like how grateful you should be to someone, or how you should be giving thank you notes to people, or how you should apologize to someone. I think we can all use that from time to time, and it had some dry humor along with it, along with fantastic lines that you just always want to keep with you. For example, in one of the chapters, he talked about how he used to give work to other students to look at, and when he would give them a paper to look at, he would also send a box of Thin Mints with him, the Girl Scout cookies. He would tell them that this is their reward for doing the paper for them, and he was grateful for that, and that was the little gift that he would bring with it. I photocopied that chapter, and I put it right on my board because I want to remember to always appreciate what people are doing for me. It was like he was making a commentary about his own life, or rather, his own last lecture that he did. It was very refreshing, and I don't see anyone not benefiting from reading it. I'm giving it 4 out of 5 stars, and I really, really enjoyed reading it. It was a quick 
read that was absolutely thought-provoking and very well done. I finished This Thought of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald a week ago. I still, I've avoided talking about it so much. I was like, oh, I'll film it today, I'll film it the next day, I'll film it the next day. I have no words, really, honestly, no words to describe this. I gave it a five. It was fantastic. I'll show you the amount of uh, pages that I dog-eared, and that's not even including the amount that I've underlined because I'm sure there's a bunch of pages that aren't dog-eared that I did underline. This is all about Amory Blaine growing up. He's a very vain boy and it's just a life story and it's inc the way that Scott Fitzgerald writes is incredible. I haven't read The Great Gatsby or anything yet. This is the first book that I've read by him. It's also his first novel. So interested in what his other novels are going to be like. There are ah, so many thought-provoking paragraphs that come out of this and there's so many like life lessons that Amory Blaine ah <laughs> see this is what's happening is the words it's so hard to get out because I really did just thoroughly enjoy this book and I'm afraid that I'm not gonna give it what it deserves <sighs> there's just so much that you can learn from this and the fact that it's still so incredibly relatable is incredible. Being that Amory Blaine, when this ended, was only still in his 20s and he still had so much to go through. Amory Blaine just tries to get through his life and everything confuses him so often and he goes in and out of love so often. He moves into different places and tries to figure out what he wants to do with his life and at the end he says, I know myself, but that is all. That's basically the whole story, but there's just so much in here. There is so much material and it's so dense. It is such a dense book, but once you get into it, you get into it. It is absolutely phenomenal. This side of paradise. There's just, and connections within the book is absolutely incredible. Like, he just, he puts in the same exact words over and over and over, and you want to look back and highlight and look back and highlight. I already ordered another copy so I could re-highlight things. I also got the free version on my Kindle. There's a free version on Kindles if you want to just, like, read it on your Kindle. Oh my god. I'm losing my breath. It was incredible. So good. Five out of five stars. Today while I was at school, I finished Post Office by Charles Bukowski. I just, uh, like, I don't know what to think about it. It's frustrating me. It was only 196 pages, and the font looks like 14 point font. Really, really big. It should have been really fast to get through, and I'm, I'm sure, like, if I didn't procrastinate, then I definitely would have gotten through it faster. I really don't know what to think about it. It was okay. I feel like I'm missing something because a lot of people really love Bukowski, and I feel like I'm missing something. I have Ham on Rye as the next book that I'm going to read, and hopefully that book will, like, make me love him more. I feel like I'm missing something. I am disappointed with this book. The post office is all about this man, Henry Chinaski, and he spent 12 years working at the post office and it just like killed his life, but he went through his entire life and a lot of interesting things happened. It was very humorous and there were some chapters that really made you think about your own life, but it wasn't anything special in my mind. I don't know. Please let me know what you think about Charles Bukowski. I'm not feeling it right now. It's making me upset. And now, we're already on to the favorites. The favorite book of the month would probably be Blankets, just because I absolutely loved the illustrations and I really enjoyed the story and I loved even more how it ended. It was fantastic and I could see myself reading it again and it was just, it was snowing outside and I was reading it and everything was perfect. Netflix view of the month. That one's gonna be The Walking Dead. I started The Walking Dead this month, oh my god. I know so many people watch it and now I understand why. It's so visually pleasing. Of course, there's like the grossness and the ugh, grotesque scenes. I get skeeved out kind of easily. I can handle it, but I get skeeved out kind of easily. But every scene, it's so picturesque and the imagery is fantastic and everything is fantastic. It's set up so wonderfully and the way that it's shot is so unique, I think, in comparison to so many other dramas out there. Definitely, if you haven't gotten started with The Walking Dead, the first two seasons are on Netflix, definitely check it out. Beverage of the month. I just really enjoy coffee, just plain coffee. The mug that I bought is Valentine's Day themed since it was February. It has this and sign on it and it says you and me on it. Really cute. I got it on clearance for like $5 and it is the perfect size. I love it. My stress reliever of the month, and this is completely not healthy. One, because a stress reliever is not supposed to be food. And two, because it's a sugary, lovely, wonderful, delicious, 
thing. Ruffalo truffles. These are almond coconut truffles, which I absolutely love. They are my favorite thing in the entire universe. They are so good. I'm in love with these things. They're amazing. Song of the month is going to be Walcott by Vampire Weekend. Vampire Weekend is my absolute favorite band ever. I've fallen completely in love with that song the past month. It's just so catchy and upbeat and wonderful. So I'll be seeing you soon. Hope you guys are having a great time. Bye!